All right, what is going on, everyone? It is Saturday, March 16th, and we are midway through the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships uh, at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. Of course, my name is Everett Delorme, um, and we are going to be breaking down last night's semifinals, and then we're going to preview both today's consolation matches and then the matches tomorrow. So uh, obviously not the fifth place game, but we'll preview the bronze medal game and the gold medal game as well. So um, we'll get right into it from yesterday's results and uh day one was a pretty competitive day uh with only one three dawn but yesterday was sweeps all around three nothing for sherbrooke for queens uh and then another three nothing another three dong for alberta over ubc um and we're gonna have an all green and gold final on saint patrick's day so you gotta love that um let's start us off by looking at the sherbrooke and queens match and this one was highly anticipated from the entire campus it was a sold out house even more people than the night before it was literally standing room only uh at the arc but ultimately for the home team sure because just too damn good they take care of the details too damn well when you look at how they spread out their offense in this one like seven kills for alans five for yuan david five for kalah in the, er, f- sorry four for kalah in the year Eight for Vanier in in the in the middle, six for uh, Merci Noé on on the left side. Just Portelance spreading that offense around like butter. Four of his hitters in double digits, no one above twenty. It's just absolutely perfect. They hit three thirty three as a team and just dominated. Now, a few people were asking me before the match if you know I thought Queens had a chance, and and I, I truly do. If they had, were, had the ability to play like they did the night before against Trinity, this would have been a really good game. However, last night against Trinity was truly Queens' peak. And I don't think that they are used to playing at that level um, on a consistent basis, A. We, we've had that conversation for years with the, the OUA and just like the lack of consistent competition. Whereas like in the RSEQ and the Canada West, you're consistently being challenged. You have to show up night in and night out. And that's not necessarily the case in the OUA. Um but then there's also the whole emotionality of it. They just played, you know, some of those guys just played some one of the biggest matches of their life in front of a home crowd. You're beating the defending champs, and not only the defending champs, it's Trinity, and then you have to go back and do it right again. Like, it's really hard to keep that, that, that emotion high. Um, and you could tell that Queen struggled. Uh, Sherbrooke really, really went after number seven, uh, Ziglicic. You'll see there offensively, he was a minus 133, and we don't have uh, serve-receive stats, but they were really bad. They broke him in the first set, and you could tell their their goal was to, to break him. And one thing that Sherbrooke does really, really well just in terms of their general gameplay is they do all the little things that your coaches always wanted you to do right when they th- send over a free ball which is, is which is so rare um they give it to their their targeted player legit every serve that they were going at him they weren't only going at him but they were making a move front back in the the seam on the sideline just all over the place they're so good at at, at working together and really putting consistent non-stop pressure like you talk about a team that's used to maximizing their abilities at all points uh, of the match that's Sherbrooke they play at that high level at all times and so far this tournament we haven't seen anyone um, give them any stress that being said they've probably had the weakest lineup or weakest matchups but that's what you get when you're the uh, uh, the the number one seed um yeah, just looking at some of these stats here, Siskna was all right for uh, Queens. He, I mean, he, he had a lot of attention on him. He was thirteen for thirty-one, hit a two fifty-eight. Uh, Reed Venning was all right, or was pretty good as well, actually, thirteen for twenty-one, uh, hitting a three eighty-one. Um, but as I mentioned, Ziglitz was really where things broke down for for queens and then also i hate to say it lex and rabbit not having the best game either uh which which sucks i'm a big lex and rabbit fan loved him when he played played at ryerson or tmu now whatever you whatever you want to call it i love him on tiktok and 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 watching him on socials and i just love watching the way he plays so watching him uh struggle yesterday wasn't wasn't the best um but (sighs) most people saw this one coming um queens fans obviously were hoping but even if you look at the, the hitting there 
312 for Sherbrooke in the first set, 107 for for Queens, 455 for Sherbrooke in the second, 136 for for Queens. Um, and then Queens was a little bit better um, and actually showed a lot of fight in that third third set, but Sherbrooke was able to come back and and get the win. We almost went four, but. It, it is what it is. Um, of course, Queens will move on now to the semi or to the bronze medal match, and they will be taking on uh, the UBC Thunderbirds. I was on the call for this one, and I was really excited. Uh, the season series uh, coming into this was two for two and two for these two teams. As I mentioned on yesterday's show, Alberta won in the semifinals, but UBC was out. UBC was out was without uh, Reeve Gingera, Logan Greaves, and James Vincent. Um, you would th- hope you would have hoped that those three guys getting injected back into the lineup would do something here for uh, UBC, but unfortunately, this one was. I'm not going to say it was all Alberta because it was quite close through the sets. Um, and if you look at like the first and the third, both both going down to the wire. However, you could tell that UBC was really doing everything they could and i i think alberta played really well but it, they still haven't still didn't reach their peak um another fantastic game there by isaac Heslinga. he was 20 for 44 with just a single error hit a 432 um, which was was very good Jane, or um why am I blanking on this? Jacob Sargent. His name's right in front of me. Jacob Sargent got the MVP. He was pretty good as well. 10 for 20 uh, for 11 points. And Le- got to give a big shout out to Liam Espedito as well. He really helped open up the offense in the first set by dropping a number of points. And his serve has been on all all weekend. And they're going to need him like really, really big in this matchup against Sherbrooke. And we'll, we'll preview that in just a second. Uh, on the UBC side of things, we saw them kind of use uh, a little bit of everything. It was the same thing. Gavin Moe's got the start. Dawson Pratt coming in uh, towards the end of the set to see if they could fi- find things. Uh, I thought Gavin Moe's was was the best player for UBC on the court. He, he was really good, 13 for 40, uh, no errors. He also was credited with two aces, but if you watch the broadcast, you'll know that I rightly called one of his aces early on that everyone else in the gym thought was out. And shout out to the Discord for showing us the picture uh, that, in fact, it was in. Um, So you got to love that. But, yeah, ultimately, it was just nothing could get going there for for UBC. They'd go on a few little runs, and their blocking was was all right. But it it just wasn't there. Also, big shout out for Logan Greaves. He was an absolute monster on defense. He struggled in serve-receive, but led the match with 13 digs. But he's still playing with a torn MCL. Um, and you could see him throughout the match just getting worked on and taped. And it'll be interesting to see if he suits up in that bronze medal gamma, uh, game. I know they have Calvin Sue as well, um, who's going to be a, who, who could potentially step in for for the Thunderbirds. Um, but they luckily they have a full, a full day off, so I'm hoping Logan is just chilling at the hotel. You know, maybe icing it. Uh, who knows? The the science on icing is so weird these days. Uh, but def- definitely staying off of it. Well, we hope, anyways. All. Righty. Do we want to break down anything more from this match? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that's about it. Um, Alberta's really good. They, they really are. Uh, I love the way that Sam Dryborough runs this offense. Um, and you've got good pins all, all over the place. Before we ma- we preview the, the finals, and I know that's when everyone here, I'm going to ha- make you listen to my preview for the two uh, consolation games. Uh, getting ready for the fifth place final tomorrow it's interesting to look at this though because in most years if you had just shown me these four teams playing against each other I would have been like what the hell is Guelph doing in the semis right Levad McMaster and Trinity Western that is typically a national like three national semifinalist teams so a lot of quality this year, uh, even on the consolation side, and everyone's talked about it that I've talked to, talked to this weekend. Just so much parity uh, amongst all the teams. So first and foremost, we got Lavad against McMaster, two teams who are looking to bounce back from maybe disappointing first matches. Uh, I'm assuming that Lavad's going to have Nic- Nicolas Fortier back. Uh, can't 100% be 100% sure um, on that one. Um, 
just because like I, I don't I haven't talked to them at all. I haven't didn't see them around at the gym any anymore. I did see a few of them at the restaurant uh, Peter's place or earlier on this morning, but didn't didn't chat with them. So if he is, I'm expecting him to have a big game. This is going to be his last tournament for for Nevada. It's such a shame that he wasn't able to play on Thursday. And on the McMaster side of things. I'm looking for Brendan Mills to really bounce back. Uh, I want to see him go out there, show confidence, and swing high and hard. Um, I really want to see him try to dominate, and he should treat this like his 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 gold medal match because people people are watching. So I really hope that both teams bring their their A lineups. It's this is a big matchup, even though it's a consola- the consolation side. This is two proud programs who are going to be going toe to toe, and I and I absolutely love it. I think this one is going to be a battle. Um, I think Graton is, is going to be set up for uh, another g- big game. Same thing with Max Lozier. And I think it's going to be going five. I think this one this one could go the limit, and I, I think it's going to be really good. Um, trying to think uh, if there's anything else that, that I want to mention about this matchup. No, not, not really. I just think that Laval feels a little cheat, not cheated, but like it's so tough. To not have your best one of your best players, your top scorers like that, in in a quarterfinal, and it just feels like you weren't able to give it your all. Whereas McMaster, I, I talked to a few of their boys this morning, and they're definitely disappointed. But right away, they're like, "Hey, we we want to go and represent the OUA, and and we want to play play against them." And um, I know there's some people in the OUA that haven't been happy that I've been saying that the RCQ is the second best conference, and I mean, you, with the way that Sherbrooke handled Queens last night. It's maybe not uh, not the furthest thing off, but this is a chance here for McMaster to to represent, and on the other side, this is a chance for Levad to prove that, like, hey, they they belong with with everyone else here, and could have potentially been in, in the semifinals as well. Um, in the other se- or, uh, consolation semifinal, uh, you've got Guelph against Trinity Western. Um, Got to go back to all the way to 2014 since last time we saw Trinity Western on this side of the bracket, of course, with the the famous three bagel. Um, situation in Calgary, losing to losing to Western, um, and I, I really like a few components uh, of this Guelph team, and I've been hanging out and getting to know some of their parents as as, as well too. Um, but this is still Guelph against and Trinity Western, and I know there's a lot of ties uh, within all that. Like Cal Wigston and Ben Joe are very very good friends, and there's there's a lot of. Uh, there's there's a lot of friendship there however like let's be honest trinity is 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 trinity and they won't lose two in a row and they will be coming for for blood and the, and they'll be going and, and and ready to play so that's and that's what we should expect from them they are the defending champs and they are the trinity western spartans uh, it'll be interesting to see if they play their guys or if they're going to rest a few of them like if they're their older guys and, and give some of the younger guys a, a shot. I'm not sure. I haven't chatted with Adam yet. So, um, yeah, I think it's it'll be it'll be time soon to go to the gym and, and do just that. Um, so I'm going to call. Hmm. It's this 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 matchup is tough here. Lavad versus McMaster. I think it really is. Um, I think I'm going to call Lavad in this one, though. I, I do. I think Nevada's gonna gonna take down McMaster, and then I'll call Trinity Western over Guelph. Sorry, guys. All right. Preview now a little bit for Sunday uh, and the medal matches. We won't talk about the fifth place game because obviously we don't know who's gonna be playing in it. Uh, but looking at that bronze medal match, the host Queens Gales are gonna be taking on the UBC Thunderbirds on St. Patty's Day. Now, if you know anything about Queens on St. Patrick's Day, you know it's one of the biggest parties in Canada, if not the biggest party in Canada. Um, there is some question around the university if the students are going to be partying today, and I can confirm that being out a little bit earlier, there's a lot of students walking around in St. Patty's Day garb with face paint and tattoos and, and all that stuff, wearing a lot of green. So we'll see if that is it actually happening today or if it's tomorrow. Regardless, I think that Queens is going to show up for this one. I think that the, the crowd is, is going to show up for them, and I think that their team is going to um, emotionally show up for this one as well. Um, and because of that, I think, I think, I think I might pick Queens in this one. I, I, I do, especially with how we've seen um, UBC hurting. Like they're still clearly hurting. You know, talking talking about Logan Greaves and stuff, but 
Queens is going to have the ability to bounce back. They're going to have an entire day off to rest and everything. Eric Siskna continues to be one of the best, you know, one man, best players in the tournament and obviously in the country as well too. Um, But I think in trouble situations, Queens has a little bit more to go to than McMaster did, right? Like, whereas... Brendan Mills is maybe more dominant than Reed Venning. I think Venning works himself out of out of jams a little bit better. You know, I don't think you get into a position or rotation for jam like they did against uh, like they did against UBC, like McMaster did against UBC. You know, Venning hit that high ball really, really well against Trinity Western. So I think just the just everything around, I, I expect Zeke Leach just to have a, have a bounce back game too. Although there's no doubt in my mind that he's gonna have to weather the storm again, right? And Queens is going to have to figure out some way to hide him a little bit because there's no doubt in my mind that Hawkins and Kruger saw what happened against what happened against Sherbrooke, and they're going to try to recreate that um, again. And for UBC, they are going to need to serve tough at Zigliczitz most likely, um, and re- not necessarily someone, but they need to have a better offensive game. Like someone needs to to really go off for them unlike they had yesterday. There was sporadicness, and Greaves was trying everything to, he, he could with the offense, but their first their first contact is, is really what killed them. Queens isn't as m- good as a serving team as Alberta, uh, but they're still pretty strong, and we saw that uh, against Trinity Western. Trinity Western just passed horribly in the quarterfinal against them. They're statistically the worst passing team in the tournament so far. Um so I think that potentially, like, I think UBC has, and this is just my own conjecture, maybe emptied the tank a little bit to get here. And this it was a long road for, for them, and they're still pretty banged up. Whereas Queens, they know how important, like, a, a bronze medal to them would be at home, especially would be in, would be very important to them. So I think low-key, I'm going to call Queens, and I think it's going to be uh, an electric match. And then finally, the final Alberta and Sherbrooke, and I am, I'm really excited for this final, the Green and Gold final, the Verriere against the Golden Bears. You gotta love it. And I was out for drinks last night afterwards with a few uh, McMaster Marauders legends, um, Austin Campion Smith, uh, Andrew Richards, Alex Elliott, who's also doing the broadcast, and we were all chatting, and they were saying like this is the toughest matchup to call. And I fully agree. There's so many things to consider here when you look at a the 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 last year's matchup in the semifinals when Sherbrooke shocked everyone and just handled Alberta. Um, Alberta's coming back, and and these these this is truly the two teams in the country who have been looking for this match every year. And I know other teams like like definitely Trinity and and McMaster, probably Queens and you know, MRU, despite having lost in the first round, like all of these teams are really going to push themselves to like, like we want to be in the finals, but definitely Sherbrooke after winning bronze two years ago, silver last year and bringing back most of their guys, they're like, our goal is gold. No doubt about it. And that's the commute. That's what's been communicated to me all weekend long. And definitely on the same, the same side in Alberta, this is a, a veteran team who's like, I talked about it in the broadcast. When you go to Alberta, you know you're going to be playing at nationals. You know you're going to be playing for medals. That's just the expectation that is that is a part of it when you don the Golden Bears jersey. Um, and they got some nice jerseys out there too. Uh, we haven't seen the uh, jump fleet um, jerseys that they did with the, the indigenous artists, but I would like to see them rock rock those at nationals, but I kind of understand why they why they wouldn't. But And it's... It's the matchup styles in this are completely different. You have dominant, big, physical Alberta with smaller, just detail-oriented Sherbrooke. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these two teams can play it out. Um, can Alberta pass enough, pass well enough to use their middles to be able to open things up? Will Sherbrooke be able to hand the phys- handle the physicality of a Jacob Sargent, of a uh, of a uh, Isaac Heslinga, of a Liam Espedito. The outsides just all around for Alberta just are, are are so big. We saw Trinity really show the path of how to beat Sherbrooke last year by just bombing serves. Alberta is not nearly a, a, a 
as good of a serving team as Trinity was last year. Sargent's really good from the baseline, and uh, Espedito is, is really strong too. Heslinga's going to need to be better from the baseline. If he's going to be an impact player and he does it kind of everywhere else, his serving has been objectively bad this this tournament so far. Um, so I think like, he's, he's definitely going to need to be better from the baseline, and someone else is going to need to step up. Like if you look at Dryabro, he's got a decent float, but he just puts it in. Sherbrooke is going to be all over that. Any of their their passers are are going to be able to, to to run that real quick. Um, and like their their middles, like like Johnstone is isn't great. Weeb will will we'll put on a good serve. Uh, and then on the other side of the net, oh man, Sherbrooke is just they're so consistent. And they play the game so, so well. So can they handle the physicality? I think they can, but I think this is going to be a battle. It's 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 really going to be... I don't think Sherbrooke... Sherbrooke hasn't played anyone uh, like Alberta. Uh, and maybe in maybe in uh, exhibition. I'm not entirely sure uh, about that. I should have checked, but oh well. But... Uh, I, I really don't know. I think the right I think one of the big matchups, A, will be how well the, the, the right sides play because like e- even last night, Yoen David wasn't fantastic for Sherbrooke. Yeah, he was five for four, five uh, five for nineteen with four errors. He hit at 053 and they brought Dwayon off the bench and he only got one set and went one for one. And I know Dwayon played some matches earlier this year, but Dwayon is a lot less physical and the left side blocker is four Alberta with Heslinga and Sargent is, is really, really solid. And then that matchup down the middle as well. If you're looking at these stats from Sherbrooke last night, they went 17 times down the middle and their efficiency is really, really good. Kodal and Vanier are, are, are super solid and they're going to be lethal at all times. And Potanos does such a good job at finding them. Um, whereas that connection in the middle so far with Dryborough and, and, and Weeb and Johnstone, Johnstone especially has struggled Um when getting set let's see here he was two for six with three errors and some bad errors too you know just like trying to do too much so that matchup in the middle is going to be very interesting uh we saw against laval that laval's middles who are quite similar in stature and, and play style to, to sherbrooke's middles really dominated and really had the better of of, of weeb and johnstone in the first two sets uh, again in the, in the quarterfinals so can sherbrooke's middles sustain that throughout the entirety of the match um especially since they have more pieces all all around um i i love absolutely love this matchup sherbrooke versus alberta um green versus gold green versus gold and i you know i'm not going to call it uh, i i can't it's 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 much too close and both of these teams look supremely confident both of these both of these teams have very nice pieces both of these teams have question marks on the right side in in, in my opinion um, and it's really just going to be about who shows up to ball more um, yeah and I really hope Queen shows up and, and stays around for that fi- for that final match too um, I will be on the call for the final match I'm not I'll, I'll be on the, the I'll be doing color with Kyle Campo which I, I love uh, that's I'd, I'd rather do color although I think I'm pretty good at play by play and uh, yeah so make sure you guys check that out on CBC uh, Gem, CBC Sports.ca, or of course the CBC YouTube channel. And I don't think I won't do a recap for uh, the consolations and matches. I don't think anyone really cares to to hear about it. To be perfectly honest, and uh, you will see me tomorrow, uh, or I guess today for the games, uh, and then tomorrow for the games as well. All right, peace, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye.